been some conflicts with teachers, I guess, in the past. It's probably ADD. Maybe it's Asperger's. They were trying to find something that I must be. They thought I was some kind of deviant creature and hell child. I just like math. It's something that I find exhilarating. It's like a passion that's inside you and you just can't not dance. I think I was one and a half when I started to read. I spent about three years just being nocturnal and not really doing much of anything. They were trying to fix me rather than figure me out. It's almost like falling down the rabbit hole. It's strange and it's wonderful and it's unique. There's lots of areas one could be gifted linguistically, um, mathematics, visual spatial capacity. It didn't have a lot of properties. All it could do is math. I'll call it earth metals. They're also very reactive. First, I'll make a quick trick brick stack. Then, I'll make a quick trick block stack. Now, go over into the 1950s. And silicon and germanium are used in computer chips. Well, then, bring your mouth this way. We'll find something it can say. Luke Black likes lakes. What we know for sure is the higher um, the abilities and the quote-unquote giftedness, the more the, the child or the adult responds to stimuli, and stimuli stays with them longer. And I've got a whole bunch of these like books that are filled with science or history and stuff like that, just because I find that more interesting than everything else. I knew I was inquisitive, It's like, and I didn't seem so much inclined to go out and play as in say and, and read a book. It's really fun for me to learn something like Italian or like math, um, so. I want to do it. It's as simple as that. What they are is they're very neurologically atypical children. So their experience, their perception, their way of processing is uncommon and extraordinary. I've always been good at numbers since I was like one. It really just feels like familiar. Some gifted kids are omnibus. They manifest as gifted right across the board. Other gifted kids may manifest or show to us gifts in certain areas and maybe weaker in other areas. There's this, you know, chaos, this car crash in a blender going on up here that has to come out the end of the pen and it just, it, it won't focus. There's two diagnoses that are on the uprise um, and one is bipolar disorder and another diagnosis that, that has really been up on the upswing for a whole lot of reasons, medical and social and political, is anything on the autism spectrum. They were just picking things that they could try to match up my qualities with and so I saw like four different psychologists try to figure it out. Giftedness is no longer funded in many states in the U.S. and in British Columbia there's no longer special funding for giftedness so parents will, will actually be somewhat okay with another kind of diagnosis if it means that that child will get the kinds of supports they need. In grade four I sort of started earlier I was getting these really bad stomach aches, I was starting to miss school you know for a week at a time then a month at a time. It's a struggle and a lot of teachers think that, oh, this is the bright kid, they're just gonna be fine on their own, and there's really a lot going on. This kid has a problem, something is wrong with him, it, you know, we don't know what to do with him. There's, like, nothing to diagnose, it's, it's, uh, it's just a, it's a completely unique thing. So, here is this medication. One of the adages in our field is once is a pattern. Often a highly or profoundly gifted person will anticipate a pattern or just see it once and then quickly begin to extrapolate. Seeing patterns in the soccer field is like breathing. It's just, I can just like see and I can see what's going to happen in like three minutes. So the teacher's up there and they're doing what good teachers do. They give a baseline generalization, several examples, and you'll see the gifted kid just turning to nod off. I can remember for the past four years, We've, we've done electricity, and they're te say, saying the same thing over and over again. We have this information already, it is not necessary to repeat. I'd already done this stuff two years ago, and I was like, okay, this is really easy. I need to do something different. I was getting really bored. I sort of don't really pay attention to you if it's not something that I'm interested in, but if it's something I'm interested in, somehow I just hear it, even if, even if I'm reading a, a book, and I'm like, I'm not really paying attention. So when you're doing review of curriculum in September and October, the gifted kid has checked out and then he begins to lose faith that the leaders, the educators, the administrators have any idea at all about how to teach because clearly they're missing about on how this particular mind needs to work. I like to learn about things, but I like to learn my way. The way I think it's 
Mm. Which, what other ways can we solve this problem? Some kids really demonstrate they do get it and are met oftentimes with misunderstanding or teachers who no longer kind of are comfortable with it. What do you do with a child who, who might even be more intelligent than you in some areas? My grade seven teacher didn't like me because he didn't know what to do with me. My favorite subject in school is going home. That's really, really sad because this is a little child who's absolutely primed to learn. She reads at about a grade 10 level in kindergarten and can write a story like that. The whole notion of what is a peer. Um, there were children here today who are age four or five and who are reading and comprehending at a grade 12 level. They get together and it's just instant. It's like I can be free. I don't have to screen my thoughts. It's fun because I, they actually under, somewhat understand me. We can connect. They can sort of understand most of what I'm saying because some of the other people will just sit there and be like, okay, I heard you were saying words, but what did you say? To meet someone else that can function at their level is just a huge excitement. You just fall in love with these incredible kids who, with their immense power, often have incredible vulnerabilities and you just feel compelled to try and make a difference for them. Sue sort of gave me my own perspective on what actually is going on. I couldn't be programmed like a little computer. I had to, you know, gain a, a self-awareness. Sort of placed people around me that sort of created an environment where, where I, I guess I felt more comfortable. Just having somebody be like, you're okay, like, it's okay to be who you are. I think that definitely saved me from going down some pretty scary paths. They're highly motivated as a group of individuals to contribute and to make a difference, which runs sort of counter to what some people think about the egotistical genius. I'm really interested in teaching, so if I can do that as well as continue to, to make art. And eventually what I would like to end up doing is using my art to sort of communicate to people about nature and maybe help influence trends. Try and solve humanity's problems like you design a cure for cancer. We can't lose this, this wonderful aspect of humanity that just wants to contribute and to make a difference. Like, it really needs to matter to all of us. You know, I want to do it all, right? I want to, there's so much stuff to do. I want, it's, you know, the palette of human experience is so broad. I want, yeah. I would describe myself as a person who likes to think outside the box. I've never expected myself to fit a norm or to be normal. When I dance, I feel graceful and beautiful and like, because the movement is just so nice. I'm really interested in things, like perhaps obsessively so, and uh, that's okay with me. There's a lot of talk of uh, IQ scores and achievement but that really doesn't get to the core of what being gifted is. I'm happy with who I am today, even though it came about in a strange way. Mm -hmm.